When we're considering ideal gases, in other words, nice simple gases where there's no forces between the molecules, they bounce off each other nicely, the temperature is fine, the pressure is low, all these things, then we can actually simplify gases, and that means we can actually work with them and do some equations. So we have something called the ideal gas law. This is actually just an equation, so I'm going to write it down for you. PV equals NRT. Some of my students actually, uh, they're kind of silly, they're calling each other pervnerts instead of PV equals NRT, I guess, whatever works for you. But uh, here we go, we have PV equals NRT. So we better define the different things here. So we have P, which is the pressure. You should know that. And that pressure is measured in pascals. We have V, which is the volume because we have that quantity as well, the size of the space that it actually uh, occupies in three dimensions. So this will be in meters cubed. We have N, we learned this before, at least I have another video about it. This is the number of moles. And in this case here it has no units, it's just a number. R is just a constant. You could look it up, but it's 8.31. Um, and its units are, let's see, the joules per kilogram per mole. Nope, sorry, not kilogram, uh, degree Kelvin, yeah. Joule per Kelvin per mole. There we go. And then we have T, which is the temperature. And that will likely be in Kelvin, since this constant is at least. So this will be in Kelvin. So this at least allows us to do these. Now R is a constant, it just always stays the same. And for the same material, we're assuming that this right here will be the same, at least within a, a question here. So we can actually take a look at this and try to deal with it. We can try to do something with it. Um, what we can do, for example, we can use our little uh, gas properties animation here. There it is. And we can see sort of what happens. So again, you can take this little PHET animation under gas properties, and you can do different things. Because you can deal with, okay, what happens if I change things? So you can see that, hey, if I raise the temperature, uh, you can see sort of the effect on pressure and volume. Now N and R, those will remain the same within the same box here. So once that's sort of fixed, you'll have N and R will be the same. Uh, well, at least they'll be, they'll be constant. So what you can do then is, it's like three variable equation. You got P, V, and T. You can see what happens. So if I keep the temperature the same, um, and I can do that in a number of ways, but we can actually keep something constant. Let's say I keep the temperature the same, constant parameter temperature. See, now I can't add or subtract temperature here. I can't add any. So if what I do then is, I, what if I uh, make the volume smaller? So if T remains the same and I lower V, hopefully you'll see that P has to go up. In other words, if I'm gonna make this value smaller, I gotta make this larger in order to keep all this side the same, because now T is the same. So if I decrease the volume, I should increase the pressure. And let's see, in a thing like this, where I don't change the temperature, watch the pressure carefully. So 0.3, I'm gonna make the volume smaller. Do you notice what happened now? The pressure went up, and I can do it again. Watch carefully what happens with adding heat. That's to regulate the temperature here. So you can see that that at least is well explained. So I think that's really fun. You can sort of play with the ideal gas law. Now, uh, maybe it's a good idea to look at a real example. So let's actually take a look at that. So um, what if we take this and we take it to the next step here? So we have an example where you have maybe 0.230 moles of an ideal gas and you keep this in a container with this volume and at this pressure, calculate the temperature. So what we need to do then is just deal with this equation, right? We just need to deal with PV equals NRT. That's just what we need here. Now, if we're gonna to try to deal with it, well, that's actually pretty straightforward. Then what we do is just deal with this. We just write it down and then we use it. So since PV equals NRT, what we can do now is start uh, just filling in the blanks. We know that this is how many moles we have, so that is N. And we know that this right here is the volume, so that's a V. And we know this right here is P, and we want T. So can we rearrange this equation right here to get us T? Sure we can. To get T by itself, you gotta get rid of the N and the R. So you can say that T equals PV divided by NR. 
Remember, because these are multiplying the t, so to get rid of them, we got to divide. So we have t equals pv over nr, which in this case, then, is going to be real simple. It's just going to be, well, the pressure, which is 5.13 times 10 to the 5, times the volume, which is 1.80 times 10 to the minus 3, all that divided by n, which is 0 0.230 times r, which is 8.31. Well, I just need my trusty calculator for that. So let me just try to deal with these numbers here. Let's see if I can fit them all on the screen. So I want, um, well, it's going to be a little bit tough to fit on the screen. So 5, you have to trust me, so I'm going to just do the bottom part here. So 5.13 uh, times 10 to the power of 5. I'm going to take that number and multiply it by, in brackets, to make sure I don't screw it up, 1.8 times 10 to the power of, do I have a little negative here? Negative, whoops, I need to delete that. There we go. And I want to the power of negative 3. And I get this answer. And I take that answer and what do I do with it? I'm going to divide it by 0.23 times 8.31. So take this answer, divide it by 0 0.23 times 8.31. And finally I get an answer of 483, something like that. So very close. So 483. So let's see then, what do I do with that answer? I'm allowed three significant figures. So I can just say then that temperature then is 483 Kelvin. That's nice. I mean, the numbers may look a little bit ugly, but you can totally do this. And then I have the pressure of the gas, and I'm told that it's decreased. So see, now I'm at this temperature. And now I decrease the pressure in an isothermal process. Now it turns out isothermal means temperature is the same. And if the temperature is the same, that means then I can use this equation again. So I'm going to use PV equals NRT again. And the question here is asking what's the new volume? So now I want to get volume by itself. So to do that, I'm going to rearrange this, get V by itself. So V is going to be NRT but I want to get rid of the P, so the P divides, so it's going to be divided by P. Now, do I know what to plug in here? Sure I do. I have V equals N, which is 0.23, times R, which is 8.31, times the temperature, which, since it's isothermal, the temperature remains the same, so it's 483, all that divided by the new pressure, which in this case is 4.7 times 10 to the 5. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. So I'm going to get on my trusty calculator. Oh, this is nice. It'll at least all fit here. So I want 0 0.23 times 8.31 times 483. I get that answer. I want to take this and I want to divide it by... 4.7 times 10 to the power of 5. And I get a final answer of 0 0.00196, let's just say. 0 0.00196. But I'm only allowed, well, I'm allowed three significant figures. So I can say that's 1.96 times 10 to the minus 3. Now that would be a volume, so that's meters cubed. This right here would be my answer. That's my new volume. That's a V. So what's really kind of neat to see is that, look what happened here. I made it isothermal, which means the temperature is the same. So you keep this the same here. In order to keep this the same, this is the same, this is the same, that if you decrease the pressure, if this goes down, then the volume has to go up. And look, the volume went from 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1.96. So you see how you can already have some sort of intuition as to what's going to happen. You have an idea what the answer should look like.
which is good because in case you made an error mathematically, you can at least spot it and be like, oh, I know that the volume had to go bigger. Because if P goes down, if all this is going to remain the same, V has to go up in order to account for it, in order to sort of make all this equal. And we were told it was isothermal, so that means this is equal. This is the same, this T.